Hello and welcome to An Idol Call Food. I'm your host, JT Tapias, and in today's episode, we're gonna be speaking about the one trait that makes for an exceptional leader. I believe that we live in a world of microwave leaders. Ouch, I know, that sounds a little harsh, but hear me out. People think that because they read a book, go to a conference, or even maybe they're mentored by by some self-proclaimed leadership coach, they think all of a sudden they're gonna be great leaders. I don't know about you, but have you ever stopped to think what those particular leadership traits look like? More importantly, have you stopped to think how you can truly grow as a genuine leader? If you've pondered these questions, then this episode will serve you well. Before we get started, I'd like to speak with you about EYBPlanFuel.com, exceptional supplements that help you make up for deficiencies in your diet. Go to EYBPlanFuel.com and pick up your supplements today. Okay, let's get started. Today's episode has an interesting twist to it, so don't go anywhere. If you're a Christian and you've been reading the Bible for a while, you realize that the Apostle Paul revolutionized Christianity for the positive. He was a force to be reckoned with in his time. He wrote 13 epistles. He put to shame more church planners today than anyone else. The question is, how did he manage to become such an efficient and powerful leader? Before I go there, I want to remind you of the scripture that, for me particularly, is tattooed on my brain by the Apostle Paul. It's Romans chapter 7, verse 21 through 24, and it says this, So I find it to be a law that when I do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Here's the great part, the part I love. He says, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Okay, I love the fact that this man that wrote 13 epistles had such an incredible impact on Christianity. Is calling himself a wretched man, okay? If he's a wretched man, what is there to say about us, right? Let's break these verses down. So in verse 21, basically without fail, even when we want to do the right thing, we just, we don't have the ability to carry it out. Why? Because the flesh and the spirit are always at war. And the flesh is sort of the first thought we have. Example, you go to a restaurant and all of a sudden the the, the waiter shows up and he says, here's your dessert. And you're like, wait a second, I didn't order dessert. But you think again and you go, it's okay, you can leave it here. But let me give you another scenario. If that same waiter came over and said, here's your salad, you would probably turn it back really quickly and you wouldn't even have to think, okay? That's how powerful the flesh is. It has this overwhelming power over us and it's always hard for us to really push back on the things of the flesh. Verse 22 says, uh, you know, Paul says he loves God in his precepts and his heart of hearts. And, and here we see a contrite heart, a heart that desires to be in communion with God. And, and he, says, he says, you know, here's this body that's pushing me to do the thing I don't want to do. But man, in my heart of hearts, I I love God's word. I love being obedient to God. He has a contrite heart. He has uh, the right heart disposition, right? Verse um, verse 23, um, he he talks about this this battle uh, between his flesh and his spirit and how they're constantly at war. But then in verse 24, once again, you see the right heart posture that allows him to overcome the flesh through the spirit. In other words, you're going to have all these temptations from the flesh, But if the Spirit of God dwells in you, if you've come to Jesus Christ in faith and repentance, then the Spirit of God is there to counteract that. He says that there is no temptation that you cannot escape. He will make a way, right? Says the scriptures. And so in these four verses, we see that Paul clearly recognizes that his heart is sick, but this recognition allows him to lean on God and depend on God, the only one who can enable us to overcome the desires of the flesh and lead ourselves to, 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 to do the right thing, right? Ourselves to, to, to do well. And so here's the number one trait that I believe the Apostle Paul has and, and that, that, that trait that made him an exceptional leader. Number one, he recognized his fallen nature, right? 
uh, he felt righteous anger towards his sin. Righteous anger means that he, he was not okay with uh, being sinful. He was battling between his flesh and his mind and, 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 and the spirit of God. And, and these things were at war. And there was righteous anger in him because he, he wanted to do what God wanted him to do, right? And so he recognized that something wasn't right. I think that that's the first thing that every leader needs to understand is that our dependency is on God and we need to be very sober-minded about uh, our, our problem, which is that problem of sin. And, and Paul had this very, very clear in his mind. He desired uh, in his heart of hearts to honor God. And he waged war against his sin, which is what we're called to do. Yes, we are fallen. Yes, we are sinful, but we're called right to toss out the sin and to wage war against our own sin. In practical, in practical terms, uh, here's here's what he did uh, in 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 First uh, Corinthians uh, chapter nine, verse twenty seven. He says, "But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified." Paul says that he disciplines his body and keeps it under control. What does that really mean? So the definition of the word discipline is basically doing the thing that you don't want to do that you know you should do, uh, regardless of what your emotions inform you, right? And so um, every single time we're going to try and do something, the flesh pushes back because, once again, I say it in all my videos, uh, every single episode, you probably hear me say this. The brain is a, pr a preservation mechanism. It's there to keep you alive. So anything that makes you uncomfortable, anything that makes you tired, the, the brain actually perceives as if you were dying. So it pushes back on these things, okay? What we're called to do is actually to superimpose our will over these things. So do the thing that you, you don't wanna do, that you know you should do, regardless of what your emotions tell you. Now, second to that, is establishing daily habits, right? Parameters that say, here's what I'm doing. This speaks about self-governance, right? God has given us a will and to an extent we have free will, um, but he's given us a will over our physical beings, over our minds, right? So the idea here is that we establish healthy parameters because discipline doesn't work if you don't have habits in place. Things that you execute on every single day, you have a place, a time, that you do these particular things. So you establish these habits, right? This is something we talk a lot about inside of the Empty Your Bucket Nutrition Plan. I also believe, and this is my, my theory, right? Um, and I wanna be very clear with this theory. I don't believe that the body has anything to offer sanctification. In other words, there's nothing that you can do in terms of your day-to-day -day that are gonna make you more sanctified or are gonna buy you any kind of favor with God. But I do believe that because identity is shifted by behavior, that physical training, that actually moving our bodies, intentionally moving our bodies, exercising our bodies every day is a great training ground for discipline. And because we're not just disciplined in one area, when we happen to discipline our bodies, it, it spills over into other areas of our lives that I believe are more important, like our devotion to God, our reading of scripture, our meditating on scripture, on learning uh, and memorizing scripture. These things require discipline and physical training can actually teach us how to show up for those things. And this is why I love physical training. It is a great way to push against what the brain says. The brain says, I don't want to do this. You push yourself physically. And then what you start to see overall is that you start showing up discipline in other areas of life, which is super, super powerful. Second to that, and this should probably be first, is the ability to tame your hunger. Food is probably one of the most desirable things that we do in this life. Uh, it's very tempting, right? You smell the food and you see that you, you, have, you have the... Uh, you touch the food, the kinesthetic, you have the, the visuals, uh, you have the olfactory is overwhelmed by food. And so food is very desiring. So when, when you actually tame your hunger, when you can put hunger aside and you can control that thing that is so automatic uh, for us, then you develop discipline in this area as well. And this area disciplines other areas of our lives. Once again, bringing discipline and self-control to our lives. So physical training and taming your hunger are two powerful things that can shift us and move us to the more important things such as our devotional time with God. I believe that exceptional leaders have to lead, lead themselves first. I see Paul here 
not pointing fingers and saying that person did this or this person said that, but instead he said, wretched man that I am, right? He was willing to lead himself first. He talks about in, in 1 Corinthians about congruency, about discipline in his, his body so that after preaching to others, he may not be disqualified, right? He's saying, hey, uh, I'm going to take personal ownership. I realize I have an issue and I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to wage war against my sin. He's constantly leaning uh into God in order to make all of these things happen, right? He's not doing it in his own will. He's not white knuckling his way through it. He's leaning on God. And this is the most important trait a leader has is the ability to lean on to God. He exercises uh, the, the fruits of the spirit. I mean, you see in Galatians 5, 22 through to, uh, 23, that the fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, and self-control. Here's the beauty about the fruits of the Spirit, and I don't know if you've ever seen it in this way, and I'll wrap up with this. The two fruits of the Spirit that hug all other fruits of the Spirit are love. You say love to who? Love God with all your heart, strength, and mind, right? Uh, and then you know, the second commandment is to love your neighbor. So from the communion that we get from God, we're able to hug those other fruits of the Spirit because when you have love, you have joy. When you have joy, you have peace. When you have peace, you have forbearance. When you have forbearance, you have kindness. When you have kindness, you have goodness. When you have goodness, you have self-control. So love and self-control hug all the fruits of the Spirit. What do I mean by this? When you're actually able to be in communion with God, every single fruit of the Spirit starts to show up in your life and the last one is self-control. A person who loves and a person who has self-control is a powerful human being to be reckoned with. Now, the way you become an exceptional leader is by doing all of those things. But the thing that I want you to keep in your mind, and if you're trying to discipline yourself, as I said earlier, to diet, to work out, to lose the weight, to decrease body fat percentages, these things in your own will are incredibly different difficult, but through God, anything is possible. And I think if you go back through uh, every single aspect that we touched on this episode and you systematically put it into place, you're going to show up as a powerful leader for yourself and you're going to be able to bring your goals to fruition. My name is JT Tapias with an idol called food. I hope you enjoyed this episode. More importantly, I hope you put it to action. I'll talk to you guys soon. Ciao, ciao.